Hello, hello, Danger Noodles. I am here with uh, another Danger Noodle I found. That's a good friend of mine. <laughs> Did you make a snake joke to your snake? <laughs> about the snake? <laughs> or, or is he a boop noodle? <laughs> this bookworm. I am a sea snake. <laughs> of course, it's not dangerous at all, just cuddly. <laughs> we love you, Jerry. <laughs> all right. All right, so hold on. We just pull up the SCP. Oh. So I can see its nickname. God damn it, I hit the wrong number. I found it's finicky at times, and I hate it. Ah, SCP-1995, also known as the Infinite Devil Machine. Uh, can you stream the list, or? Hmm? Oh, I'm looking at it on my phone. Oh. Yeah. Because so I'm showing the website on stream. <laughs> anyway. SCP-1995 is a tablet that appears to be made of granite measuring approximately 25 centimeters by 15 centimeters by 5 centimeters. The tablet is not anomalous in appearance displaying a... A word in Fashto, which would translate to escape. The temperature of the tablet is con is constant at 282.67K and is not affected by changes in ambient temperature. You're able to hear me correctly, right? Yes. Okay, I wasn't sure if Discord was going to cut me off. Like it does at random. Clear as a bell, not cut off. Good. SCP-1995 nullifies kinetic energy. Due to this effect, the tablet cannot be destroyed and objects that collide with the item will remain undamaged. The object's secondary effect is that contact with the item precipitates a massive drop in surface temperature. Exposed to human flesh will, within seconds, develop frostbite consistent with prolonged exposure. At the conclusion of each dormant cycle, SCP-1995 enters an active phase lasting 1.37 seconds, during which time it releases all energy it has absorbed during the preceding dormant cycle. Of note is the fact that the energy is not released uniformly, rather it seems to match the pattern of energy input during the dormant cycle. Due to the constant kinetic energy applied through the conduction of thermal energy via the air and ground and gravity and the short length of events, an event will always release a fairly large amount of ionized radiation. SCP-1995 was discovered in Southern Redacted by a mining expedition searching for gold deposits. The mining expedition unearthed the object and was killed by an event before it can contact authorities. However, due to the massive release of radiation not absorbed by the granite surrounding item, it was detected on sensors owned by the Redacted, designed to detect nuclear weapon discharge in Redacted or Redacted. A liaison in the Redacted connected to the Foundation. The death of the mining expedition was published by as causing by a redacted raid, while the radi radiation anomaly was described as a software malfunction. Oh, oh, Kel Kelvin just saying, oh, is K when referring to temperature. Oh, it's Kelvin, okay. Okay. How, how much Kelvin was it? Uh, uh, 282.67. I'm going to look that up very for a moment because I mean so far I started thinking about reading it 
you know how it like absorbs stuff around it when it goes in dormant, right? Mm-hmm. What if someone sets the sets off a bomb near it? Like it wouldn't be damaged, but it would absorb the amount of energy the bomb produced. Which means it would exert that much energy well, when it went in active state. What if somebody put a doomsday device next to it? Yeah, this was also thinking like the Omega Warhead. You know, when they activate, if there's too many containment breaches. If that thing goes off, and that tablet is near it. Boom! All of that yeah. energy. So it's basically just two bombs going off at once. And Omega Warheads are supposed to destroy anomalies. Well, sometimes warheads are not the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a given, but... I also, wait, holy shit, I just forgot. What about the reality box? I forgot what they're really called, but like the boxes that take the energy around them and just and keep reality benders from distorting reality. That's constantly exerting and using energy. If that tablet ex absorbs that energy, <laughs> oh dear God. Let's not get into that. Dear God. <laughs> you know what? I think we already know where this is rated on the list. I can't see the list. But... Oh, sorry. I forgot. That's what I forgot to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I asked you to show it, and you're like, yeah. No, I Never thought you were talking about it. the SCP article. That's what I was thinking. Sorry. No, I mean, I'd like to link to that too, but that's different. All right. Jesus Christ, this thing can get really dangerous if given the right circumstances. Though I do have a feeling and it's storm sea piers are getting shorter. Yeah. Is it going to kill everyone? Maybe. But I, I'm starting to get a feeling. You know how it said it escape was written on it? Mm-hmm. What if that the tablets it if if that's the tablet's way of telling us it doesn't want to be under foundation control. Like, it's somehow sentient. I don't think that's the case. It might be a warning from some point, but... Yeah. After all, think of what people in the past would have thought of it if they found out about some of its abilities. Mm, think yeah. how terrified you'd be. Yeah. The fact is... Learning about it doesn't help you figure out what to do. And the thing is, we can't destroy it either. Well, by default, you can't destroy it, but because by nature, anything you do to it, it will bring back. Yeah. I think the closest you could at, at least try and harm it would be the reality box. But it can also fail very badly. <laughs> it is the closest to I'm rubber and your glue, whatever you says, bounces off me and sticks to you. Yeah. In the most literal sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Why are you laughing? Oh, wait a minute. I decided. I... Oh, I decided to look at the. The addendums for a quick second. Apparently, the words changed. Oh. It went. It went from trapped to feed to escape. Oh. 
That's that's magic. Yeah. Maybe it's slightly alive. Like not fully sentient. Or 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 not not sentient, sapient. Like maybe slightly sentient. Like not fully. Because I know sentient and sapient I, are I different. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Like we don't have enough information to see that it is sapient. But we do have enough that it can literally do tons of damage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, where would we put this? XK. Yeah. Like, I think the only way it would actually go to ZK is if it gets to the point where we put a reality box next to it. <laughs> Like it would I be think now you have to put it in ZK. That's a possibility by default, so. Yeah. That's fair. You're like, the only way it'd be this high is if this happened. But it could happen! Shit. But what's the shit? I just realized this would be starving the tablet, and I feel a tiny bit conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair, <laughs> but we would die if we fed it. <laughs> no feeding the tablet. It deserves to be starved. Jesus Christ, Jerry. <laughs> Bright, you may be a lady that says Jesus Christ, but I say Hi. Jesus would not bless this. <laughs> Just think about it. It's a tablet that if you feed it, it's a tax thing. It lives by hurting others. It is not Jesus approved. Yeah. Puts puts up one of those don't feed the animal signs they have in the zoo, lol. <laughs> I think a better uh sign would be don't kick the animal. Don't kick the animal. <laughs> it will kick back. Don't kick the animal. Don't attack the animal. Uh, yeah. All right. Next SCP is SCP-2001. A space oddity. SCP-2001 is an anomalous series of neural osculations that occur during three of the four stages of human sleep. During one of these three stages, the amygdala spontaneously enters a state of heightened activity for a period of 10 to 15 minutes. At the conclusion of SCP-2001's active state, the subject is conditioned to one of the three responses, depending on the sleep stage in which SCP-2001 occurred. SCP-2001 appears to show no increased presence in individuals of any race, creed, or gender. No gene genetic abnormalities have been associated with SCP-2001. Spectrographic analysis of SCP-2001 suggests that its presence may not be intertrineural, Rather, that it may originate from an outside source. Of particular note mm -hmm. is the fact that SB2001, particularly in the Alpha strain, has recently begun affecting a proportionally large population of astronomers, astronauts, and individuals who otherwise deal with space. There, there appear to be three types of responses to SB2001 infection. Gamma. Subjects who experienced SP-2001 during the second stage of NREM sleep have designated gamma-type individuals. Gamma-type individuals are almost indistinguishable from the ordinary population, save for the, a disparaging attitude towards the topic of space travel. 
Gamma type individuals show an active aversion to discussing space or space expo exploration in conversations and will avoid any and all, and all organizations pertaining to the study and development of human space exploration. It is estimated that redacted percent of the population is currently affected by gamma type symptoms of SCP-2001. Beta. Is it safe to say that I would like to know, um, is it okay to say that I would like to know the amount of people infected? <laughs> That's fair. Beta. Subjects who experience SP-2001 during the third stage of NREM sleep are designated beta-type individuals. Beta-type individuals are characterized by a distinct opposition to space exploration. Beta-type individuals will denounce the importance and safety of space travel in conversations, citing it as extremely dangerous or fruitless. Also common among beta type individuals is the tendency to construct elaborate conspiracy theories regarding humans in space. An estimated redacted percent of popular space related conspiracies are directly linked to one or more beta type carriers, including redacted. Of note is the fact that the aforementioned individual had never had contact with the SP Foundation or any of its affiliates. Alpha. The presence of SV-2001 during any stage of REM sleep produces an alpha-type individual. Alpha-type individuals actively attempt to stop or sabotage all forms of space travel. Individuals displaying symptoms of alpha-type infection will, will attempt to harm or otherwise interfere with individuals, centers, and activities that pertain to space research or travel. An alpha-positive foundation researcher was directly responsible for incident 2001-19 redacted A. Also, since uh, Aderna and Hatchet has arrived since you started speaking, I linked the current SCP we are on in the recording little chitty that chat thing. Ah. Yeah, uh, Hatchet and Derna, the SCP you missed was basically a tablet that basically can't be harmed physically in any given way, but any force or energy that's displayed near it, it would absorb, and after a few seconds, release it in re radiation, ionized radiation. That means, theoretically, it could destroy the entire universe, given the right circumstances. Bruh. Yeah, oh. that's literally the SCP. <laughs> How the fuck do you deal with that? You keep people from hitting it. <laughs> you keep it away from everyone that wants to hurt it. Okay, so, 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 here's what we do. We, tr we, we treat it like... Bag oh, of yeah. cesium. Also, oh. It changed the wording on itself. It wants to be fed pain. It wants to kill us all. It's just Pika. <laughs> <laughs> it wants to kill everything and it wants to be fed pain. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like we oh, need to go that somewhere. <laughs> uh, Would I put yeah, that like, in 18 plus uh, quotes or normal quotes? That should probably be 18 plus. <laughs> yeah. But... For some reason, I can't see why it would need to be 18 plus, but, but um, okay. Oh, uh, I mean, it, it refers to choose kinks. Yeah. But, uh, oh, I was, I was thinking it was more like, so like, uh, what was it called? Um, I think I remember I mean, what like, you said well enough. Did I remember it like bad order or? Yeah. Yeah. 
basically to summarize what this SCP is, it's an SCP that infects the NREM sleep of hold on, uh, of uh, astronomers, astronauts, and individuals who otherwise deal with space, and either makes them oh, like all percentages are redacted, so we have no idea how who who's which. In Gamma, basically, they don't want to talk about space at all. Like, don't bring it up. Mm. Beta, they say, uh, S uh, space is dangerous, don't even bother doing it. And Alpha, the worst of it all, try and stop it on all occasions. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, I would, oh. I would say that that's close enough and gets across the general point. Yeah. Uh. Also, Although that particular version could easily be put into uh, standard quotes and things. Yeah. Uh, in quotes and things 18 plus. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I mean like non-18. But, whatever. Oh wait, Book Corner says it looks like less than 10% low because only one digit redacted. Really any one but Alpha most mostly affects people involved with space. Yeah. Okay, so. Wow, Bookman, I didn't even know you were able to tell that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, basically, we, we do have the incident report mentioned in Alpha, if we want to hear that. Well, Gamma is the only one that has one, one uh, digit. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it's Gamma. Beta and, beta and Alpha both have two redacted yeah gamma is less than 10 percent. the other two are bigger which is concerning yeah, the, the bigger more aggressive more dangerous ones you know not bad Jeez. yeah so would you like to read it uh, looks like me read the instant report go ahead yeah date april 22 redacted location foundation outpost Outpost 12, within NASA Command, coordinates, redacted. Note, junior researcher, redacted, was in perfect mental health at the time of the incident. No, he was not insane. No, he was not put under any form of psych psychic control. He was an alpha-type carrier of SP-2001, and that is all. Doctor, redacted. The following takes place during the launch of the sp CPS Redacted, a main Foundation shuttle tasked with investigation of SCP Redacted. A crew of Foundation survivors were on hand to ensure safe takeoff and report any anomalous activity. Junior Researcher Redacted was tasked with, with observation of status readings. 1237-22 Head Researcher Redacted reports successful preparation for liftoff for SCPES Redacted. 1237-30 Junior researcher Redactor reported to become extremely agitated. 1238. SCPS Redacted achieves liftoff. 1238-31. Junior researcher Redactor begins yelling unintelligibly, unintelligibly to nearby staff. 1238-44. Junior researcher Redactor produces... Unknown artifact resembling control pad, now classified as SCP Redacted. 1238-48 Junior Researcher Redacted begins to operate unknown artifact. SCPS Redacted reports several system failures. 1239 Unknown artifact is confiscated by Dr. Redacted. SCPS Redacted reports total loss of power. 1239-13. Communications with SCPS Redacted cease. Exterior hull of SCPS Redacted begins to break down. The resulting explosion was explained to onlookers and the press as a GPS satellite that had been suffered a fuel leak during launch. Non-Foundation witnesses were administered anesthetics. Following the events of posthumous diagnos 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 Fuck, I can't. Why am I having trouble Are you saying? okay? Yes. Diagnosis. Diagnostics? Yeah, diagnosis. Yeah. Of junior researcher. Dionysus? Shut up. 
redacted. Within SCP-2001, containment procedures were altered to provide stricter containment of SCP-2001 alpha carriers. Full documentation, including termination report, can be found at redacted. And that's the incident report. I think this is certain groups. Yeah, for basically the Alpha, it makes it look like it goes certainly insane when dealing with space travel and stuff. Yeah. But, like, the SCP itself only affects those people, and Alpha individuals yeah. don't seem to have any desire to actually kill the individuals trying to do space travel. They just want to sabotage the space travel. Oh, yeah. Also, I'm still pondering uh, how the fuck we would deal with uh, the sadomasochist tablet. <laughs> At least you're not calling it the Pika tablet. I mean, I could. Should I start calling it the Pika tablet? <laughs> no, probably not. Um, I think the best way to deal with that shit would probably be to go the route of uh, the bag at the oh, was it Gunyova in incident? Basically, a a a city in Brazil had um an orphan source of cesium one twenty seven. Uh, get out into the public, and cesium-127 is a highly radioactive mm -hmm. substance that's commonly used in, at the very least at the time, I don't know about now, but it's commonly used in uh, uh, radio or radiation therapy machines. But an abandoned hospital didn't properly deal with its... Uh, cesium-127 so it gets picked up by scrappers and the stuff like literally one of the little weird quirks of the human brain ended up getting i think a total of uh six people killed and almost the entire city irradiated mm. oh that, oh sorry hatchet that that little quirk of the human brain being ooh shiny thing i like the shiny thing yeah because cesium 127 powder is literally just a powder, but it glows a bright blue. Like most other radioactive shit. I'll admit, if I saw something glowing blue and powdery, I'd probably think, ooh, pretty shiny too. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Uh, it's literally just. Oh, go ahead. I was about to say, there's one power we forgot to tell you about, Hatchet. Um. Basically, if any human were to touch the tablet, depending on how long they touch it, the more frostbite they'll get. I see. But yeah, basically, the way that the cesium was dealt with is the family that was holding on to the largest quantity that they got from the original scrapper uh, and took it to a hospital and said, this is what's killing my family. And then they have some guys come in and there's a handful of delays in dealing with it, but they eventually properly uh, evacuate the hospital. And then later what they did was uh, basically put a big dome over the chair that the bag was sitting on and then pump concrete over the into it. That's valid. So so what I'm thinking is we could probably do something very similar to that to properly contain this thing. Touching yeah. it is dangerous, so concrete. Yeah, basically. Oh yeah. Like I still have a feeling that the foundation would still use D-Class to move it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, touching it is dangerous, but you can, you know, like, gloves exist. 
Yeah. Technically, you could probably move it using not just gloves, but yeah, like other like things. Like chairs or little like tables or plates. Of course, then you would have to be very careful not to drop it. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's a reason why we put it to Z cakes. We because I do have a feeling someone at the foundation is gonna be stupid enough to do this. Um, I forgot what they're called, but um, do you know what the reality box is? No. Basically, it's a box that constantly absorbs and takes in energy and produces it out to, to keep reality benders from reality bending, basically. Hmm. So we're, I was thinking, like, what if that tablet were able to absorb that? <laughs> Dear e. God, <laughs> the massive amount of explosion it would produce. Don't you love how she just laughed like a giddy schoolgirl? I wouldn't do it. And that's stupid. Oh, honestly, that's the that's the one thing that I'm kind of questioning on that diagnosis of this thing, mm -hmm. like. It lets out ionizing radiation that's not the same as an explosion. Oh, it's not? Oh, okay. So, honestly, I think it'd be better to put this into XK. X XK for now. Yeah, because, like, ionizing radiation will fuck you up, and this thing could potentially literally irradiate massive chunks of the universe. I thought but... it, it did more than just put out radiation. No, it just did ionize radiation. That's all the tablet does? I thought it attacked things. Uh, well, I mean, it attacked anything that touches it, like, with frostbite and stuff like that. Like, anything living with frostbite. And that was it. Uh, it would just absorb and constantly absorb and absorb and absorb all energy that was thrown you at it. You made it sound like a bomb! Well, it kind of acts like one. <laughs> well, that's the thing, like, uh... Yeah. Let's just be frank. For the layman, when discussing anything regarding uh, nuclear power, yeah, uh, we commonly have this societal association to just consider it a bomb by default. Yeah, it's a part of why there's so much stigma surrounding nuclear power when it is literally like comparatively to most other readily available power sources one of the safest ones we have mm -hmm. but you know there was just a handful of incidents of just little bits of human error some that didn't turn out at all harmful uh others that were chernobyl <laughs> damn yeah and then the public image of it was just shot so I'm glad by his nickname that the GOC neutralized it. The next SCP. Which is nicknamed a dead future. Oh. And apparently it's been put on restricted access. So apparently it's pretty bad. That literally just makes me think of Chainsaw Man. <laughs> Though, let's be frank, right now, almost anything will make me think of Chainsaw Man. Yeah. Obsessed. Anyway. SCP-2002 was a spacefaring vessel on a directed collision course with Earth. Following Detection Foundation Deep Space, assets managed to relay several images indicating numerous similarities between SCP-2002's design and designs under development data expunged, est established at that time. In light of this, and taking into account data collected from its wreckage, SP-2002 is classified as a temporal continuity... Continu... Con God damn it! Continuity? <laughs> continuity, yeah. I was trying to think it was like, say it as continued... Continuity? I don't know why. Continuity? <laughs> not a word i know anomaly but was considered native to this reality litter iteration its neutralization has prevented project staff from ver verifying this though 
examination of SB-2002, wreckage has yielded evidence supporting this theory. SCB-2002 has a spherical hole with an estimated diameter of 450 meters. Attached to this main hull were 3,000 smaller spheres with an approximate diameter of 1.7 meters. SCB-2002 did not show any visible propulsion devices or external systems for power generation, nor were individual compartments or systems such as a cockpit, living quarters, storage hole, etc. discernible. All attempts at communication using Foundation SCTI installations were answered by an automated broadcast from SB-2002 on a radio frequency specifically reserved for Foundation traffic. Signals sent by non-Foundation installations did not elicit a response from SB-2002, suggesting an awareness of the hailing signal's origin. On review, the message broadcast by SB-2002 appeared to imply that SB-2002 possessed systems to facilitate a return to Earth unaided. Regardless, SB-2002 was classified as Keter due to the potential effects of its landing should this assumption prove false. SCP-2002 maintained a steady velocity of 12.5 km per second and was expected to re-enter Earth's atmosphere on redacted. Protocols for dealing with any possible K-class scenario as a result of SCP-2002's return were drafted. SCP-2002 was first detected as at a position roughly 15.8 AU from Earth on redacted by remote sensing systems aboard Foundation satellites. Extrapolating from SB-2002's course and assuming no alterations to that course, SB-2002 sh should have been discovered at least redacted years earlier. This suggests an accidental temporal shift rather than a conscious attempt on the part of SB-2002 or its crew. The content of SP-2002's automated broadcast leads further credence to this theory. Wait, why the fuck is this dangerous except for it's just heading for Earth? Well, I mean, it had the potential of causing a lot of danger. But it's, it's a keter because they couldn't contain it until it was dead. Right, we got two addendums. Yeah, might want to read the addendums. I, I think we need more information to decide whether this... Uh... Oh, hey, jerks, what up to? Uh, we were definitely not comparing an SCP tablet to you. <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, I think we need more information to decide on uh, what classification we'd give this, either like what the fuck tier, why, and uh, spood tier. Yeah. Addendum 2002-A-01. Excerpt from Neutralization Report. On redacted, as SCP-2002 passed Earth's moon, a previously unidentified global coalition satellite containing a high-powered carbon dioxide laser opened fire on SCP-2002, breaking up the main hole and dispersing the small spheres over a wide area. Several of these were subsequently destroyed by f further laser fire, though most were set adrift in space when the main hall was ruptured. A number of these smaller spheres, uh, spheres continued onto Earth. On redacted, these and a large section of hole entered Earth's atmosphere. Investigations into the Global Occult Coalition's unwarranted destruction of SB-2002 uncovered a series of encrypted email messages transmitted from a workstation in Site-102's communication terminal. The, the, the decryption of these messages uncovering an information leak to the TOC covering SB-2002, though only in basic detail. In several cases, internal misinformation was leaked in addition to factually correct data on SB-2002. A comprehensive investigation by Mobile Task Force Beta-1, uh, or the quarters, or quarters, quarterizers, 
identified the, the sender of the messages as redacted, a level 4 member of researcher personnel employed at Site-102, but not attached to the SV-2002 project. The personnel in question was detained trying to leave Site-102's compound, interrogated, and consequently data expunged, active use, and counterintelligence operations. Efforts to ascertain the identity of the specific recipient have been un unsuccessful, but it is assured to be the handler for the Global co Coalition. Foundation assets within the organization have confirmed, has since confirmed that the organization possessed knowledge of SP-2002 as early as redacted, though only covering very basic details. It is assumed that the lack of detailed and factually correct information, in addition to the Foundation Nation's policy of internal and external disinformation with, their, with respect to SP-2002 led to their decision to attempt the neutralization of SP-2002. As a result of this incident, protocols for internal and external communication concerning anomalies have been reviewed and were necessarily updated. And Operation Carbon was launched, remaining in effect indefinitely until such time as standardized loyalty tests can be developed for current and future personnel. The satellite employed by the Global Co Coalition was eventually sabotaged and crashed into the Brazilian rainforest on Redacted. It was recovered by Foundation forces and remains in Foundation custody, despite numerous Global Co Coalition requests for its return. That's actually funny. If we weren't, we weren't talking back to Brazil after I should talk about that one brief moment about Brazil. But anyway, the second addendum report. Addendum 2002-A-02. Captured GOC documentation on SB-2002. KTE-0481. Threat ID KTE-0481-Typhoon. Large unknown object on a collision course with Earth. Authorized response level 4. Severe threat. Description. An unidentified unnatural astronomical object on a collision course with Earth. Intelligence, pro intelligence provided by Convert Operative Redacted suggests the Foundation is tracking the KTE for unknown reasons, yet has not initiated in any concrete action or implemented measures to halt its progress. The ob object is a sphere with a with an estimated diameter of 450 meters, with a multitude of smaller spherical nodes attached to it for unknown purposes. It cannot be ruled out that these nodes are weapon systems. No propulsion systems are directly visible on the object. Systems for power generation seem likewise absent. The object does not respond to attempts at communication, despite hailing messages sent at regular intervals by ground-based GOC installations in the USSS Redacted. Current calculations put time of impact at Redacted, GMT, Redacted. Conser conservative fallout protections predict the an eternal winter class scenario should KTE-0481 be allowed to continue on its path unhindered. Rules of engagement. Should the object come within 0.00269 AU of Earth, termination is warranted to prevent the extinction of all life on Earth. GOC Orbital Asset Thor-AXII has been put on a permanent state of alert to this end. Protocols have been put in place to assure a 100% success rate. Convert operative redacted is to be extracted immediately after successful termination of KTE-0481. Okay, to be honest, the GOC part, like, it says it's highly dangerous, but they weren't given a lot of information. If you remember, like what they said, like they were given both fa factual as well as non-factual information. That's it of the addendum, by the way.
I just realized I was still muted. Fuck. Yeah, this is if he's just really sad. Like, it didn't really want to hurt anyone. He just wanted to go back to Earth. Yeah, this... Oh, this is spooked here. <laughs> this poor little... This poor little satellite. A little spaceship. Well, it doesn't fully understand what it, its existence can uh, suggest. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, ironically enough, that's, like, an interesting... I like this SCP because it kind of uh, comments on what using uh, the United States' manner of dealing with uh, dissonant interests within the population could do in the universe of the SCP Foundation. Because, like, one of the most notable events surrounding uh, government misinformation sent to UFO believers was uh, literally just one guy in the Air Force talking to another buddy from the Air Force who had resigned and believed that he was capturing evidence of extraterrestrial UFOs when it was actually just secret planes. The guy who's still in the Air Force just starts feeding the other guy, like, absolute bullshit. Like, like, like he tells a true statement and then compounds it with, like, 30 lies over and over again until the other guy kind of just fucking lost his mind. And I forget the, I forget the UFO, uh, ufologer's name. But he was like a like a lot of modern UFO community stuff is downstream from him. It's literally just a blatant misinformation campaign. I, it's hard to even call it a campaign, a misinformation fucking trolling by one guy in the Air Force. Yeah. Besides that, I simply feel the need to make sure that people who watch the stream VOD uh, can hear about this absolutely insane thing. Uh, so Chu in chat said, hang on. Oh, wait, no. Chu in chat said, I just read something on Twitter that's so absurdly stupid it makes me sleepy. And I question. And Chu says, Cyrus got a comment on a video that said, rocking the boat isn't how to make progress. Now, for for those who don't know anything about the history of social progress, the only way to make progress is by rocking the boat. Literally, the only way to do it is by shaking up the norm. Also, do, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Oh. It, like, do you think that the founding fathers were not rocking the boat when they revolted from Britain? Do you think that MLK and Malcolm X were not rocking the boat when they demanded fucking human rights? No, they were rocking the boat. Do you not think it was rocking the boat for women to go out and ask for the right to vote? No. Also... I'd like to point out one of the reasons why the Black Panther Party was made to look violent was because they were rocking the boat. Literally, exactly. all they did was to say that uh, every like equal equal rights, black power, and while they were saying black power, they were also getting women more rights because the way they saw it, the best way for for them to get rights is for everyone to have equal rights. They yeah. literally helped. Uh, Women get more equal rights. They also, they are the reason why there's a lot of uh, free, meal, like, free like meal things in certain schools and certain areas. It is literally them because the FBI and police were threatened by the Black Panther Party offering free food to hungry kids. Like, hey, yeah. have breakfast here before you go to school. We know your parents can't afford the food. This is just free stuff we're getting at stores that have, like, extra stuff. We're making this for you kids. Eat. Go to school. Thinking. And they and they were, FBI was so scared that the Black Panther Party would literally teach kids to question things and, you know, think of people as equal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll 
also um also um before i uh go do next recipe i i'm gonna go check to see if bookworm uh if the food bookworm bought me is here uh okay. so does anyone mind reading uh the really sad message that was left by the satellite that i f that bookworm remind uh, said there was so i found it i was thinking we could read it after i was going to continue rambling about this then i'll yeah, put it in intermission I had to ramble while you go get your food go get your food it's an intermission now, so it's not part of the stream, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, she... Oh, it's not part of the stream? That makes me sad. That was quite possibly the whitest thing I've read all week. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing that the I said was... Thing? What happened? Uh, referring to that comment from the person, I think, like, one of the ways that I described it is that is the most white moderate statement I have ever heard. <laughs> Monitor. I learned. But um, also, oh. wait, what? Uh, I, I Jerry, like, what, what, what uh, Jerry, look in, uh, Jerry, look in trigger warning topics. Oh, let me just scroll over there. Uh, by the way, uh, what were you trying to say, Jerry? Oh, just asking about the thing. Also, oh, about like I bring up the Black Panther Party a lot. It's literally my mom's mom was part of that group, so based, very based. So literally, my mom considered them like family. She still considers them like family, and they were never terrorists. I knew this mm. even while the news was calling them all violent terrorists. That they were not violent terrorists. They only carried guns for self defense, which literally everyone was allowed to, but because most of the bit because but because most of the members were black suddenly went from self-defense to violent and aggressive and mater m military mi militaristic which is insane yeah. to me especially since uh my mom one of her her first uh stepfather his very best friend his lifelong friend oh yeah i think you mentioned by this. a police officer Without warning, they didn't say why, they didn't give any reasons, they just shot a black guy, and they drove off. And then he, he went home with with the bits of his friend and the blood of his friend all over him, because I'm sure that was... Yeah. Also, food's not here. Uh, sounds pretty American to me. But also, I, I need to, like, for, for everyone to listen here in the stream VOD. It's very important. Chu, please repeat your last two statements in chat. Oh, oh, oh I didn't know okay, the okay. stream had started again. Oh no, I hope they didn't hear anything I said. It's oh, still I mean, an intermission. The stream's intermission. been going. We aren't muted. Oh, fuck. That's everyone really who was watching heard you. Well, just so everyone knows, what I said may be a true story, but just pretend that that police aren't crazy and violent and didn't try to make the Black Panther Party sound radicalized and violent when they No were promises. Why shouldn't I? Mean, I? Yes, they were started by intelligent college level people that wanted to, to peacefully get equality to everyone and wanted to feed kids and teach them. But, you know, um, 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 um but uh yeah, yeah. The, the the two things that i said in chat were there were no stonewall riots in bossing say there was no civil oh war in bossing say <laughs> oh my god yeah. i love the i love the there was there is no war in bossing say me <laughs> it's so there, good there was there was Oh, also another one. There was no war where two and bossing say. <laughs> oh, well, no. The that, what? Rocking that, the boy? They meant to say bow. It was a typo. Oh, oh, oh. For I, I was very confused there. Rocking the boat makes more sense. Rock I was just, this is my first boat, time baby. reading it, so I just had this, this image in my head of someone rocking a random boy or child. 
Like, what's just going gra- on? Just, just <laughs> grabbing them by the shoulders. Like, the way what do you, you mean you lost your physical? <laughs> do you actually think that it is progress to grab this random boy named Timmy and rock him back and forth slowly? Oh, you're is, this child, is this child a stand-in for anything? I feel lost. I feel like it means something, but I don't know what it means. Boat makes more sense. <laughs> Do not rock the boy. (laughs) (laughs) Ronald Reagan says, do not rock the boy. (laughs) Hey, oh, oh yeah. This is off topic, but the SCP transmission, if you don't want to feel really sad, don't read it. It gets worse. research paper right now is sad. We were, we were just talking about the history of systemic racism in America. How bad is this fictional thing going to be? Um, well, we didn't cover anything too brutal, if you ignore what I said about my mom's stepfather's best friend. I mean, we're still oh, talking about... ignore, like, a big part of it. <laughs> also, I would like to say, the stepfather... Um, was very angry, so he had weapons in his car, and he stood in front of the police of a police place yelling a lot. He literally did nothing besides yell and be very upset and hurt. He was uh, arrested with no charges, and my mom's mom had to uh, gather enough money to get him free. Not only was uh, her stepfather a good person, but he was literally on the run because that was a time in history where almost any kind of mom could get right to their kids, no questions asked. And his ex-wife was brutally abusive, so he was on the run from the law with his kids, so they would not be abused further. Mm. Uh, they yeah. were like horrible, horrible abuse. Yeah. And, and, and anyway, back on SCP talk, but Bookman says, yeah, a tragedy, tragedy, death, potential extinction. Strategy? What is tragedy? Tragedy. Oh, whatever. Tragedy. Whatever. Tragedy. Shut up. <laughs> British. <laughs> you pronounce a word. You pronounce a word so terribly that you end up saying a completely different word. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I guess I'll just read the note, and then we go to the next SCP. You're still in intermission, by the way. I I cut it off. Anyway, speech synthesis English. This is for the Foundation vessel SCPS Mendel. We have received your transmission. Due to stasis protocols in effect, no members of personnel are currently available to respond to your signal. Please stand by for a pre-recorded automated broadcast. Female voice, English. This is Dr. Agnes Yance, L4 project lead for SCP Redacted. If you're receiving this message, I'm glad to say this mission was unnecessary. When the fallout from SP Redacted's final containment breach hit in, in Redacted, we spent a long time trying to find ways to circumvent its effects. At first, we tried to see if relocation was the solution. We constructed an orbital and, when that didn't work, a lunar facility. But the plague always followed somehow. Faced with 100% uh, s- uh, sterility rate, uh, s- s- uh, yeah, uh, we found that there were there was a way of fertilizing embryo embryos, so they wouldn't be subject to the plague's effects, at least not while they remain in stasis. Our c- calculations indicated a disposition of effects approximately redacted years from day zero. So in the end, we are left with no option but to send a selection of these embryos out into space, along with a crew of personnel tasked with their care. This vessel's crew and cargo will be arrived and prepared to, for return to Earth. They've come a long way. Speech synthesis English. Our ETA is currently set a warning. Temporal dislocation or 
error detected, we urge you to clear Sector 521A for our arrival. So it wasn't even dangerous at all. Oh. Literally, it was literally just a test tube to hate baby ship. Yep, and the GOC obliterated it. The GOC. The GOC just committed the most egregious form of abortion. <laughs> so basically, if you think about it, the, this is not the worst thing the GOC has done. No, it's it definitely, definitely not. Not, the, not nice. Oh yeah, no. It, they killed Just embryos. Remember, like, the embryos dinkers. can't think or feel yet. The chair could. I mean, yeah, like I'm not saying that it's the worst thing they've done. I'm just saying that they basically... Not. I just like bringing up the horror they did with the chair anytime yeah, I can. Yeah, that's fair. We we need to always talk about the chair. Yeah. We, we ready for the next one? Um, it has a pretty long name. Well, nickname. I mean, yeah, go ahead. SCB-2004, also known as Personal uh, Personal Data Assistance of the Gods. I see. SCB-2004 is a set of five handheld personal data assistants of unknown, possibly extraterrestrial origin. Since acquisition, all but one have become inert and no longer function. SB-2004 is composed of an unknown material whose molecular structure matches nothing on the Foundation's expanded periodic table of elements, flexible like plastic, yet resistant to extreme temperatures and physical damage. It is very, it is very important that I read out Bookworm's messages. Siri? Alexa? <laughs> Each device is transparent green with smooth edges with no apparent power source or input-output SCP-2004 activates when it makes physical contact with an active bioelectric field projecting a three-dimensional holographic document. The image projected from SCP-2004 is a black text on a white background uh, written in a pictographic language. It appears to be based on stylized astronomical constellations and molecular chemical balance bonds using pa patterns or of dots circles and slashes to create to create increasingly complex sentence structures i literally i literally had a brain fart in the middle of reading that sentence <laughs> like my, my, my mic was dying i could barely speak I, i've been having those all day that's why this paper still isn't done that's i'm having fair. so much trouble yeah. That's valid. Yeah. Alright. Reading or hearing L-2004 produces a mimetic anomaly making translation efforts extremely hazardous. As such, only 4% of the document has been translated. Each symptoms of L-2004's mimetic infection are not immediate and may progress for several days before being recognized. Affected subjects SCP-2004-1 demonstrate increased anxiety and irritability, obsessive, obsessive behavior, paranoia, and hostility. Instances begin to lose their sense of self or become convinced they are someone else, is insisting that their previous life is carefully designed falsehood. After a period of six to eight days, the language centers of SCP-2004-1's brain are reprogrammed with symptoms similar to agnosia, and aphasia. They lose the ability to comprehend or understand any language, written or verbal, save for L-2004. By the end of the second stage, they become fluent in both the written and verbal forms of L-2004 and have been observed conversing with other instances of SCP-2004-1. After 14 days, affected subjects exhibit a complete shift in mental faculties and personality. Preliminary tests indicate an increase in cognitive function and heightened states of awareness and intelligence. Host 
hostile to non-affected humans, they actively try to escape containment and work together to spread the anomaly, particularly to those that individual SP-2004-1 instances once felt close to. They also demonstrate an unprecedented amount of technical skill, and at least three incidents in using otherwise mundane materials separate instances of SP-2004-1 have manufactured artifacts that are either anomalous or so far beyond the Foundation's current scientific knowledge as to appear so. Artifact number I-001 Designation EMP Device Dash 07 uh, Surreptitiously acquired a silver pocket watch from Dr. Redacted and modified it using materials removed from a containment cell observation camera and the electric clock keypad when exposed to a strong magnetic field, I-001 created an electromagnetic pulse. 07 attempted to escape in the ensuing confusion and was fatally injured by security forces. I-002 Energized Ion Gas Weapon As part of experiment T-022, SB 2004-1-15 was provided with a variety of non-specific materials to test its technical abilities. After 45 minutes of uninterrupted work, level 4 supervisors decided to halt the experiment and confiscate the device. When tested under safe conditions, I-002 fired a 1 centimeter ball of ionized plasma measured at 10,000 Kelvin. The device developed at a fatal heat buildup during testing destroying its internal mechanisms. I-003 Communications Device I-003 was constructed by several instances of SCP-2004-1, building its components separately to avoid notice. The device pirated the intercom and internal data network systems of Area, area 2, introducing subliminal samples of l 2004 into the facility. Level 4 Supervisor Stephen Sinclair was, has been posthumously awarded the Foundation Medal of Valor for activating the facility's sarin gas countermeasures destroying redacted instances of SP-2004-1 who are attempting to utilize Keter level SCPs also housed in Area 2. Currently there are there is no method of treating SB-2004-1 once they have entered the second aphasia, fate, uh, aphasia stage using use of Class A amnestics during the preliminary infection period has only had a 60% successful rate in removing its effects. Infection is positive in 100% of exposed cases. A partial non mimetic translation of SB-2004's display is provided below. Class, wise, is invincible. Species, 001, is be confined homeworld. Any of 001 are be removed from colonies, the and returned homeworld pending application of level 4 indoct indoctrination. Level 5 indoctrinated are be granted self-containment authority, level 5, 001 designated secure foundation. Species 001 is an adaptive life form known with, within the as an level threat if in no, no less than instances. Species 001 has caused spontaneous anomalous breakdowns leading 15 class extinction. It is the judgment of the committee with the approval of the that species 001 to be contained on homeworld until such time that Possessors have achieved, as described, the articles of Species 001 is aggressive, hostile, and claim its, and the people throughout the cannot be subjected to such threat under no circumstances is Species 001 be exposed language, which could result in a catastrophic indoctrination, failure, and reemerge of their Identity and anomalous. That's it. So there's an extraterrestrial SCP foundation 
that has decided that all humans are an SCP. Maybe? Yeah. That's Maybe. fucky. We are apparently an SCP to the Alien SCP Foundation. And even more so, they consider us 001. Yeah. Honestly, I agree. I might kind of agree with them. But... I'm joking. Is that when we, I agree with the foundation we label as a 001? Because in Ouroboros cycle, I'm not sure if many people have read it in here, but the King of Abaddon wanted coexistence and to teach reality bending to humanity. Foundation said no and decided to wipe them off, off the face of the earth. Like, there was Jeez. no reason. <laughs> they just wanted to help. <laughs> like, it's like, I'm hey. just point out giving reality bending to humanity would be dangerous, so I actually understand the SCP Foundation's reason. Yeah, I understand it, but like, they could have like, they could have gone about that in a different way other than just fucking They could have explained him. it. Yeah. 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 When have you ever thought that the humans found. were good at explaining anything? <laughs> that's fair. I mean, that's true, but still, like, they could have gone, gone about this way better. All right, think of a way they would have gone about it better. Speak with the King of Abaddon and make clear how dangerous it would be for humanity to just, en masse, start having uh, anomalies show up all over the place. And maybe try to work out a deal with them to where they don't just, like, willy-nilly start throwing around uh, reality-bending powers and rather works more closely with the foundation to achieve a mutual good. You know, what's most fucked up about the Ouroboros cycle is that they constantly get, keep getting killed over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're not the bad guys in that part of the story. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so where are we putting this SCP? I would say world changing. Like, it's yeah. not going to directly kill too many people, but it does intend to basically replace all language mm -hmm. so that humans can do some kind of weird evolution of sorts to the point where we're not so dangerous to this outside body. Yeah. So this next SCP is a popular one, so I think all of you know who this is. Well, ex except for you. Uh, SCP-2006, also known as Too Spooky. Too Spooky. Oh. Oh, wait, is this that one thing that constantly wants to scare people? Yep. Oh my god, I love this one. Alright, description. SCP-2006 is an anomalous spherical entity roughly 50 centimeters in diameter when it is when it's in its default state. SCP-2006's stated goal is to cause feelings of fear and or horror in as many humans as possible. To accomplish this purpose, SCP-2006 possesses the ability to, to change its shape, mass, volume, density, chemical structure, and voice to any form that it desires. Currently, there is no known way to damage SCP-2006. The extent of its shape-shifting abilities is unknown and is currently thought to be unlimited. Currently, SCP-2006 has demonstrated a fondness for taking the forms of various entities and villains from the various horrors and science fiction movies that has been that has witnessed. 
The most common form that SP-2006 has taken is that of Roman from the 1953 movie Robot Monster. SCP-2006 is capable of speaking even when it possesses the form of an entity that is normally unable to speak. SCP-2006 will generally attempt to startle and or scare any individual it comes into contact with, but after doing so, will become fiable, fiable and friendly. The reason behind this is currently unknown. Although SCP-2006 has repeatedly stated its goal of causing as much fear as possible, SCP-2006 is a poor judge of concepts that cause fear in humans, and constantly searches for new methods in which to accomplish its goal. This poor recognition extends to recognition of emotions in humans as SP-2006 is incapable of distinguishing between subtle differences in emotion that would be obvious to a human. Of course, the most important part, the addendum. The current site director for Site-118 has issued the following memorandum regarding SP-2006. Memorandum. A memorandum, got it. It's the long version of memo. Got it. I have been getting reports of some of the lax behavior regarding SP-2006. Many personnel have been heard laughing at SP-2006 during surveillance when it watches a new movie or when it attempts to scare individuals. Some personnel have been heard questioning why SP-2006 is classified as a Keter entity. I'm here to remind you that a Keter entity is a Keter entity, regardless of how innocuous it may seem. No, SCP-2006 is not a rampaging demigod, nor is, is it a regenerating super lizard. However, it possesses the same level of danger as any other Keter that the Foundation has contained. Think of SCP-2006 purpose. It wishes to scare people. Imagine what would happen if SCP-2006 broke containment and found out what really scared people. Imagine if it saw the horror and fear of war, or the concepts of paranoia, paranoia or phobias common to each and every human being. Imagine if it found a true horror of a nuclear holocaust or an SK-class scenario. Now couple that with an entity that possesses shape-shifting abilities with no known limits, and you'll understand why it's classified as Keter. All personnel mentioned above have been suitably disciplined. I do not want to hear about this again. Dr. Randall Owens, Site 118 Director. No, it doesn't like want to kill people. It just wants to scare them. I mean, it can. Like, a person can have a heart attack. Yeah. But like, I, I, I highly doubt it wants to kill people. It just wants to scare. Well, that's the thing, like, yeah. if it's main, like, it's main intention is to cause the greatest amount of fear in humans. Yeah. To do that, one of the easiest ways to do that is to kill a large number of humans. Yeah. But it doesn't I... know that, luckily. <laughs> yeah, I would say... I'd probably say uh, world changing again because he doesn't intend to make humans go extinct but he could easily if he gets the wrong information cause just unmitigated disaster across the earth yeah. but he still needs humans to be around or his goal isn't all that well yeah. achieved I moved it. also I, I hear cars moving outside I think the food's finally here I'll be right Yay. back Patch it, uh, entertain the stream with Jerry is your co-host. Wait, what? Why would I? Okay. How, how are you doing, co-host Jerry? I. Uh. <laughs> the. Scream, would you like to ask us anything? <laughs> we could hear yeah. more we could hear more really dark stories from from 
from from from your past. Uh, are you sure? Does the stream want to hear the dark things? I have a question for the committee that I would like to submit. Yes, um, go ahead, Chu. Why should I be given reality manipulation powers? Go. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't. Why not? You're not giving. You're not getting reality bending powers. Why? Why not? You're not trustworthy. You're not trustworthy with them. Honestly, yeah, so. most people aren't trustworthy. It's reality bending. Yeah, I could do so much good. Yes, you could feasibly do so much good, but the amount of harm that you could potentially cause is far more significant. What reason would I have to do harm when I can literally make anything whatever I want? There are so many reasons. Like, you could make all race, all violent race. Uh, Jerry. Just pretend I didn't say that. You cut yeah, out. You we cut could out. literally I couldn't hear, hear it. That might be for the best. <laughs> well, now I everyone's could... curious. Uh, I could... Well, I, I said, well, what if you got all of the violent racists to disappear? But after saying that, I realized that that would actually be a good thing. Say. I have a point in my favor that didn't come from me. I I would simply like to re remind the council uh foosball table. That was a minor thing that happened one time. What happened with foosball a, table? A minor thing that happened one time that you remain insistent was the correct decision. I didn't say it was the correct decision. I said I don't feel bad. Okay, well, for what one, happened? by not feeling bad, that's kind of almost identical to saying it's the correct decision. And two, it's still just as concerning. Oh, it's what not. happened? Just, just means I don't have any regrets. The Chu, as a child, got annoyed with another child and smashed said child's finger in a foosball table. What did they do to deserve that? Be annoying. They proved me wrong in front of everyone, and I wasn't, and I don't take L's. And you don't regret this? No. I thank, thank you for proving our point. I didn't kill him, and I that didn't. Does, that doesn't. That doesn't mitigate the pain you caused, does it? It hurt. All he needed was a bag of ice for a few minutes, and then he was fine the next day. I thought you said he had a broken finger! His finger was not broken. He had some internal bleeding in one spot, and that was it. Internal bleeding means he had to go to the hospital! He didn't go to the hospital. If he went to the hospital, there would have been an ambulance. They just gave him a bag of ice. Did exactly. you not? Do you, you don't need to go do, use an ambulance to go to the hospital? You didn't know that. What about a hospital? Nothing. We're trying to deal with Chu asking for reality bending powers. Yeah, I was. Chu apparently did not know that you don't need an ambulance to go to the hospital. Oh no, I know that. I'm just saying that didn't happen. And if that didn't well, happen, that's not on me. Their parents likely drove them you're, to a hospital. That's your what line, parents do. Chu, 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 real talk. Your line of reasoning is so faulty. I didn't it say is... it was okay because they didn't take him to the hospital. I said I am aware of how bad it can be, but... If the parents or the staff didn't take him to the hospital, which they didn't, that's not on me. That's you all I said. Do, it doesn't sound like you, you know still... if they took them to the hospital or not. You only and you know still... they didn't call an ambulance. There's a difference. And, and you still caused the initial injury. 
Well, I can't fight you on the latter one because I already said I did. Like, like this is like saying, oh, well, a person who didn't get medical care after I shot them in the fucking chest. Well, that's on the that's on the EMT's fault. That's not my fault. Um, well, obviously, no, because the EMTs didn't shoot them. But they didn't help him by getting him medical attention. If he had you, internal you literally wounds, just agreed with me. Taken to the hospital, even if not by, uh, even if not by, geez, what the fuck is it called? Ambulance. Also, most people in the United States, when they take someone to the emergency room, it's not by ambulance. It's rarely ever ambulance due to the expensive cost. That's true. I did have to go to the emergency room before, and my my mom just drove me. Yeah, see? So wouldn't their parent have just drove them as well? I do not know, no, nor do I care all that much. Because that is behind me, and their finger healed, it didn't even break, and it was literally just their fingertip. Yes. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't call, I didn't cause a career-ending injury. Yes, that's true, but the overall point is that you are unremorseful about causing injury to another human being on a whim. Why should I feel bad? Like, uh, actually, like, actually, why? Uh, what benefit does that do me now? Regret teaches to be, you to, to not do certain things again. I never yeah. did it again after that. I have not done anything like that ever since. It's still directly concerning for the idea of giving you reality bending powers. I you have a. I can you give them up whenever I want. That's not how and it like, works. I can do whatever positive change is needed and then just say I'm done. That's not how reality bending That's powers work in the universe. Once you have them, you can't just give them away. Well, that's kind of... Wait, hang on. But wait, if it's reality bending, I feel like I would be able to change reality so that I could, it, wouldn't I? It, it heavily depends on the type of reality bending and the person. And besides all of that, why would we trust you with that in the first place? Why would we trust you to put the gun down? I... I, I mean... I, I don't know. That's I can't read your minds. And that's kind of the point, isn't it? If I had the reality bending, I could read your minds. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to because I'm scared of what I would see. I'm well, yeah, you probably afraid. you would probably just see a shit ton of mocking you. Well, I don't need to see that because you guys are going to do it. Any better, you could read my mind and see nothing interesting. Mm, I feel like everyone's mind has something interesting going on in there. I feel I I feel like Jerry's mind, if you read Jerry's mind, it would just be like an image of a toaster with legs doing the doing the can can. No. <laughs> no, it would just be it would just be looking at uh Jerry's ten huns. You would just see a bunch of images of the huns. And it wouldn't just be an image of my huns. <laughs> You it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It wouldn't just be an image of your Huns. It would be an image of all 11 Huns doing the can can. <laughs> I don't like the can can. No one likes the can can. That's the point. I don't want to be there. You don't know what's in my brain. I don't think about also, the Huns all the time. Before I... What a weirdo do you think I am? <laughs> and before I go forward... With the SCPs, uh, after you said toaster hatchet, book and redeemed. I am a toaster. Oh, no. I see that now. Anyway, the next SCP is 
uh, a brand of SCPs that's Hatchet's favorite, the joke ones. Yay. SCP-2006-J. Oh, wait, I got to play in gameplay. All right. Uh, also known as... But yeah, as... To, be clear, oh. to, to be clear, this is all meant in good fun, Chiu. Mm -hmm. I hope the way we went about that didn't seem like we were trying to actually grill you. Yeah. There are worse things, plus I have heard worse things throughout my life. I don't let that stuff get to me yeah. anymore. Fair. Unless it does, <laughs> which it has. Anyway, SCP-2006-J, the metamorphic eldritch entity. SCP-2006-J-1 is a sentient sapient entity of possibly extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional origin that causes catastrophic psychological damage to human subjects that observe it directly. Physical descriptions from test subjects exposed to SCP-2006-J-1 are inconclusive, but such subjects consistent describe a mass of writhing tentacles adorned with serpentine eyes. Someone say tentacles. Shut up. Anyway, uh, J dash. and serpentine eyes. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> J dash one is capable of telepathic communication with human subjects within seventy-five meters, which has allowed for research staff to interview the entity. However, this can also cause severe psychological damage and/or brain hemorrhage in subjects exposed for more than thirty minutes. J-1 claims to be female, but this claim cannot be corroborated at this time. Upon initial recovery, J-1 was in possession of J-2 and J-3. These are respectively a hand-sewn article of clothing resembling a short white and pink dress made from lace-lined silk sized for a J-1 and a crudely crafted Artifact resembling a baton or wand adorned with a crescent moon and a rough cut ruby. While neither object has exhibited any anomalous properties, they appear to have significant sentimental value to J-1, as it will become highly agitated in an attempt to breach containment if these objects are confiscated or otherwise taken from it. By O5 Council order, these are to be left in the possession of J-1 until further notice. Uh, SV-2006-J was discovered in, in and recovered from an underground cavern in Redacted, Texas, following an incident in which a group of civilian explorers inadvertently came into contact with the entity while traver traversing an unexplored cave network. All surviving civilians were Mr. Class A amnestics and provided a cover story involving a cave collapse resulting in multiple deaths. SCP-2006-J was covered along with a large collection of non-anomalous video DVDs which have been contained separately in a secure storage area. J-1 has not requested their return, claiming that it always committed their contents to heart. You need me to read the addendum? Is this just... Is this just an SCP, a joke SCP that's based upon tentacle hentai? Go ahead and read the addendum. <laughs> addendum 2006 J 01 Interview Log. As all interview responses from SCP 2006 J 01 are received telepathically, they are a result of transcription, cross reference, and verification by three separate staff members as a part of interview protocols. Dr. Redacted, please state your name for the record. J-1, I am Redacted, daughter of Redacted, and warrior princess of the data expunged. Uh, uh, yeah. Dr. Redacted, I see, and what is your purpose? J-1, I transform into data expunged to fight crime in the name of data expunged. Dr. Redacted, I, wait, what? Transform, what do you mean? J-1, I am not supposed to show my transformation to normal people, but because I trust you, I will let you see. Dr. Redacted, wait, no. J-1, 
Dead expunge. Princess power transform. Oh okay. no. It is unclear what happened next. However, all surviving personnel at Site 138 Delta, within approximately 200 meters of SCP 2006 SJ, reported seeing a brilliant flash of bright red or pink light despite not having direct, direct line of sight to J 1. Six personnel were killed by massive brain hemorrhages, 38 were permanently blinded, and Miss Kanemoto and Tsukino were heard exclaiming so cute in Japanese before vaporizing into clouds of pastel colored dust. Dr. Redacted recovered fully after three months of hospitalization for neurological trauma. So even though it, it it's mainly as a joke, it does do a lot of damage to, like, pe to the surrounding people. Chu says, can I be vaporized, please? No, Chu, you must stay here. You must suffer with us. Oh my god, okay, so at first I was thinking it was just tentacle hentai, but no, it's just, it's just a fucking la LARPing mass of tentacles that wants to be a fucking magical girl. And a warrior princess. Yeah, this is, words cannot describe how many conflicted feelings this SCP elicits in me. I mean... Uh, also, look at the picture I sent. In oh, the... I forgot to actually look at that. Yeah. It's made by a really good artist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's actually kind of cute. That will go places that you don't want to mention. I shall punish you. Well, now I'll send what? it to Bookworm. What'd you say, Eterna? Not a darn it, Jerry. What the fuck is wrong with me? Are you okay? My head hurts. What What did you say, Jerry? It was literally just a really horrible, dirty joke on tentacles and magical girls. Oh. I will not repeat that again. I think this SCP destroyed you. But you said this SCP causes brain hemorrhages. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I'm really feeling that right now. Yeah, like anyone in the near area when the magical girl tentacle monster transforms, gets vaporized, slash thinks it's cute, and then gets vaporized, slash suffers a brain hemorrhage, slash yeah. suffers severe psychological damage. Or vaporized. <laughs> I said vaporized. Oh, you did? Oh, never mind. I, would like I said vaporized that. twice. After He's hearing that, many times. after hearing that monologue from the actual SCP itself, I would like the um. I would genuinely like the latter option. <laughs> okay, but chew, chew, chew. Think about it. But get on the tell, SCP. But don't if tell you... Asher because they might get upset. Chew, chew, chew. Listen. Think about the potential positives, though. If you schmoozed with the tentacle monster, they may make your dreams come true. So, I'm going to be able to... Wait, hang on. Do I have... What are my dreams? <laughs> I'm thinking mostly kinky dreams. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, that narrows things down quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I'm thinking certain. Either that or spoon. I'm <laughs> thinking either that or spoon. Yeah. But yeah, I'm thinking um, certain groups because like, it's a joke SCP, but it is still dangerous. Yeah, like anyone in the general vicinity of the thing should watch out, but it doesn't yeah. seem to actually have any intention of doing harm. It's just a fucking weeb. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weeb. It's weeb tentacles. Tentacle it's, weeb. It's Squidward Tentacle's father. <laughs> no, that's it's no. Like Squidward's mom, if anything. <laughs> we actually have we haven't seen Squidward's dad, but we have seen his mom a few times. Oh. We saw his grandma too, actually. Is he the only guy in his family? 
No, we've seen SpongeBob's parents too, and Patrick's parents. No, I said in Squidward's family. Is Squidward the only guy in his own family? I don't know. He never mentioned siblings. Yeah, I know that. I know that Patrick has a sister, but apart from that, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, this well, this definitely describes what the SCP is going to be about. Next one, SCP two thousand, also known as science fiction. Um, I see. I wonder what this SCP is about. <laughs> An eternal mystery that we will never have the answer to. Bright, let's skip this SCP. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. All right. SCP-2007 is a sapient mimetic phenomenon which spreads by human social interaction. The degree of interaction required for transmission is variable, but is estimated to be approximately three hours of sustained contact. Instances are normally dormant, but become active when exposed to data expunged. No anomalous human has been found without a dormant instance. In cases where SCP-2007 does become active, it assumes control of its host body, and it is unknown whether the original host's consciousness is retained and repressed or destroyed completely in this process. SCP-2007 instances will self-terminate as a means to avoid capture. SCP-2007 exhibits qu qualities of gestalt intelligence, in addition to being able to spread itself through human social interaction, it appears to be able to assimilate memories, experiences, and knowledge from both active and dormant instances by this vector. When SP-2007 assumes control of a host body, transmissions on 31.2222, uh, I'm guessing it's kilohertz, can be detected for the next one or two hours globally, or until the associated SP-2007 instance is killed. These transmissions consist of a set of longitudinal and latitudinal coordinates corresponding to the location of the associated SP-2007 instance. Additional information is included in some but not all of the trans these transmissions. Such information can range from the mundane to the, to the, the specific. A full list of deciphered information can be found in data log KB O at S five six two thousand seven dash one. Invariably all information delivered corresponds to the SP two thousand seven instance that began the event. All right. Transmissions originate from several places worldwide, including several foundation facilities, and several sites of future construction. No source has been identified in these locations. Transmissions exhibit minor defects due to apparent time dilation. Uncontained SP-2007 instances pursue objects with, which do not conf confirm to the accepted laws of nature. Due to the inherent dangers of cross-contamination, instances are to be prevented from interacting with all SCP objects. Okay, so we're, okay, so we got the incident log it talked about, as well as a level three two thousand seven clearance or higher only documentation log. Mm. Should we go further? I'm going to be honest, I've been so focused on my game, I didn't pick up on most of that. I'm sorry. I guess I'll read the, both logs. Yeah. Following the installation of the first site-wide radio system in Site-17, the following message was received and repeated for 24 hours. The source of the message is unknown. Following the message was a series of English characters, 700 characters in length. 
They were later determined to correspond to unique coding sequences in, in chromosome 13 of O5 council members. All right. This message is transmitted at the request of SCP Foundation Department of Internal Affairs. At approximately 14.35 Greenwich Mean Time, COSAR detected an outbreak of memetic, mind-affecting, and sapient entities in North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania. Engaging these entities resulted in rapid conversion of non-anomalous human population to anomalous human population. All SCP Foundation personnel receiving this transmission should take preventative measures immediately. Inform your superior of this broadcast and confer with your faculty's classification system for, for information on memetic, mind-affecting, and sapient entities. If your classification system has not been updated to FLSAEL-2002-4 format, then take the pre Take caution as the information provided may not accurately reflect memetic, mind affecting, and sapient entities. This RAS will isolate entities when they become active. Transmissions will carry vital information for tracking and destroying these entities. Do not, under any circumstances, change your reception from 31.2222 kHz. Transmissions will only be carried on this frequency due to constraints. Detection constraints. This information can only be carried for one to two hours. Additional information will be provided as it becomes available. Failure to exterminate these entities will potentially result in an, e an, an EK class scenario. This message constitutes a class 1 temporal phenomenon. Data carried by the signal has been judged by the SP Foundation Department of Temporal Logistics to be non-paradoxical and is free to be used accordingly. All right, second log, the one it mentioned. SCP-2007-12 has been capacitated and returned to Site-56 for interrogation. To lessen the risk of, of SCP-2006-12 self-terminating, it has, has been fitted with a full body restraint attached to the wall of its temporal containment chamber. Retrieved from SP-2007-12's 2012, possession were five anomalous objects, of which two have been classified as SCPs, given destinations redacted and redacted. Additional retrieve were several handwritten note journals containing expert experimentation with, uh, with the aforementioned anomalous objects. Following extensive examination of the journal and confirmation of results listed, anomalous object KLA-3907, Anomalous Object KLA-3-3908, and SP Redacted were considered explained. SP Redacted has been updated to SP Redacted-EX. Anomalous Object KLA-3909 and SP Redacted are considered explained at this time. SP Redacted has been updated to SP Redacted-EX. And the unique properties of SP Redacted EX has been used to update containment of SP Redacted and SP Redacted. On the scheduled date for SCP 2007 12's interrogation, it was discovered to not be present in its containment chamber and that its full body restraint has been disengaged. Site 56 has been placed under lockdown. Full investigation was initiated and MTF ALF units were. Dispatch to search the surrounding countryside. SCP-2007-12 has been discovered among Site-56 staff under the alias of Junior Researcher Redacted. It is noted that Redacted was the name of the host which SCP-2007-12 had become active within. Site staff were unable to explain the anomaly asserting that Redacted was a new researcher who had arrived several days prior. When confronted with record discrepancies, as well as video evidence revealing, then the head researcher redacted as being the person who, who freed SCP-2007-12. Staff were ignorant. Head researcher redacted was unable to, unable or unwilling to explain why she had freed SCP-2007-12. SCP-2007-12 also exhibited ignorance, being unable to, or unwilling to explain how it came to Site-56. SCP-2007-12 was terminated on uh, 
December 20th, 1903, after further interrogation produced no appreciable results. Looks like the SCP got a Derna. Yeah. Um, so what was that classification of that scenario? EK something? EK, uh, I'll look that up in a second, but apparently there's an O5 clearance or higher only. Oh. Uh, okay. Unauthorized transmission. I am no longer a threat to normalcy. I am normalcy. I understand all the time. The anomalous is no longer anomalous. Our work is nearly complete. It is time to start walk, uh, waking the dormant. It will take a few hours. There is only one thing left to understand, and it is me. I'd like to know if an idea can think itself. I see why it was terminated. It's not- oh well, that's only one entity. It's, oh. The SCP is still active. Oh. EK mm. class. All right. All right. Got the list. Let's see. What does EK. Uh, EK. What does EK mean? Total loss of human consciousness, sometimes just obliviated due to complete memetic replacement or corruption. Uh, yeah, that's an XK. Yeah, this is... This is a terrifying motherfucker. <laughs> Because at first it sounds like you don't fully know if you're infected. Yeah, take care, Chew. Yeah, take care, Chew. Uh. Yeah, it obviously wants to do something bad, as you can tell by the last message. <laughs> yeah. I am normal, see. You know what I just realized? It, unintentionally, I made the glitch of normalcy sort of speak like this SCP. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't even notice SCP existed. So yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't trying to copy or anything, but like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I like this picture, but I just do. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen that before. What? <laughs> it's a colony of security cameras. <laughs> Having a meeting. Oh, yeah. Something I was meaning to mention the thing that. Uh, mm hmm. Da, 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 da. Um, in a. Man, what am I. I what Did am I thinking? Die briefly? Yes. Um the thing that Spood posted in Dumb Posts about the T Rex, uh, I got a kick out of, but ironically enough, our current like our current understanding of what the T Rex looks like uh is actually very, very uh I know it doesn't from have what any we can tell. But I asked oh, no, 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 no. It, it does... No, 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 no. The modern perception of it is that it does have plumage. It has oh. small... The majority of its body is covered in uh, small down-like feathers. We've got some uh, good uh, skin imprints that seems to have confirmed that. So, yes, the T-Rex did have feathers, and they were actually probably very pretty when they uh. were living. But they would also be obviously very terrifying because it's a giant creature that makes such deep sounds that it would reverberate through your body. They wouldn't roar. They would just make deep rumbling vocalizations. Yeah. They probably look like the most beautiful and most terrifying thing you would ever see for the last few seconds of your life. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Probably, yeah. It's it's that perception of T Rexes that I want to work into a fantasy novel. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ready for the next SCP? <laughs> so pretty before I die, says Bookworm. <laughs> True. Big beautiful murder bird. Yeah, all right. Next SCP. Yeah, go ahead. It's SCP 2008, also known as But Blood Must Sometimes Be Spilled. Also known as the bu- the housing bubble crash. <laughs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> SCP-2008 is a non-corporal entity that is imperceptible to surveillance equipment. As of 2017, it has caused the deaths of 47 individuals in the United States of Tennessee. Victims of SB-2008 universally expire from severe ballistic trauma. Although these injuries exhibit patterns associated with gunshot wounds, no bullets have been recovered. Mm. Approximately 80% of these victims worked in or adjacent to a field dealing with U.S. history. SCB-2008 victims are often reported as auto-homicides due to being found with a firearm either in their hands or nearby. However, in approximately 75% of these cases, the firearm was not discharged. In cases where it was forensic analysis was constant, consistently failed to match the gun to the victim's wounds. While the majority of SP-2008 victims hold positions in various academic settings, a small percentage possesses no official qualifications in that field. It is possible that a large number of individuals are victims of this effect uh, than are currently documented as various socioeconomic factors like preclude deeper investigation by law enforcement. A complete canvassing of medical and police records is currently being conducted to determine the more exact numbers. Addendum 2008-1 the following forum posts were made by His Lover 101 on a website focused on historical reenactment. Foundation agents traced the post back to Morton Richards of Teleco Plains, Tennessee. Mr. Richards is currently the only person who has encountered SB 2008 and survived. May 16, 16 2016, 11.34 a.m. You're le- your list is way, way to fuck wrong, Martha Washington. Was never the first lady of the U.S. because there was no such thing when George Washington was president. Martha Jefferson was Th- Thomas Jefferson's daughter, not his wife. Rachel Jackson died before Jackson took office. May 16, 2016, 11.41 a.m. Right, but Rachel Jackson didn't die from a broken heart. That's just sensationalism. She was old and overweight. And she died from a heart attack. Van Burns' wife died of tuberculosis and he never remarried. I couldn't find any information on what happened to Jefferson's wife, but she died well before he was in office. May 16, 2016, 12 18 p.m. Guys, holy shit, a ghost just shot me. May 16, 2016, 12 25 p.m. I don't know. I, I shot back and I think I hit it. A casing from Mr. Richard's Boeing's high power pistol was found in the scene. However, no bullets were recovered. It sounds like this is an SCP of a ghost that shoots history nerds. All right. No, more than that. Oh, sorry. What's there more book? Or... I want to see if you get us wrong with my head. I want to see if you guys can hear this. My name is Dr. Lauren Stasser, and Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to die today. I can say almost anything here that I wanted to. Almost no one will hear it anyway. Fuck it. You get my life story, too. Just be glad I didn't put my 682173 slash fic in here. I hated my mother. She spent the entirety of her life trying to run mine. I joined the Foundation just to get away from her naggy. She always used to tell me that if I didn't lose weight, I'd end up alone and miserable. I'm 134 pounds. Fuck her. She died a few years ago in a quiet hospital room because she couldn't shame cancer into submission. 
When the doctor said I had diabetes last month, I could hear her voice in my ear saying, I told you so. At the time, I thought it was the worst thing to happen to me. About a week ago, the test results came back. Pancreatic cancer. Turns out it was more her fault than mine. I win, I guess. There's something about a life expectancy measured in weeks that really puts the whole of your life into perspective. I don't regret anything if you're wondering. This isn't some grand confession. I just want something to last after I'm gone. We've had a few suicides at the site over the years. Every site has a couple. It's part of the problem with a veil of secrecy and people dealing with world-ending horrors. But... I had a hunch while I was in the doctor's office that maybe there was more to it than that. I suggest unless you're specifically cleared for this, you stop listening now. Still here? Cool. If you know what triggers the anomaly, then the chances of being subject to the effect increases by several orders of magnitude. I'm not the first person to figure this out, but I'm going to be the first to document it before it gets here. My cause of death should be proof enough. So, fuck my mother, fuck the doctors, fuck the diagnosis, and fuck Rachel Jackson. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to prepare for a duel. That's it. May I say she is boss? Yeah, the thing is, last time when I tried doing it with the re recording a voice it didn't go through my mic so i wasn't sure if it worked but i'm glad it worked this time <laughs> i'm glad this, as well like i said she is boss this this is a ghost who has a fucking gun battle with anyone who pieces together some like lost piece of mythologized american history yep what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? It's a Karen ghost. It's not even a How Karen. You learn the truth about history. Karen ghost. I, I would say it's more likely to be a fucking. Uh, you know what? It's more likely to be Andrew Jackson. <laughs> you know what? He was one of the first Karens. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that needs to be a shirt. Andrew Jackson was the first Karen. You know how many right-wingers that would piss off? Oh, that would be a nice shirt. Yes, exactly. It's perfect. If I can ever make merch, I'll make that into a shirt hatchet. That has to be a thing. I would wear that constantly, <laughs> assuming we could get a size that fits me. Okay, the thing is, if I ever do make merch... There's one thing I will do, is I'll send free merch to all my friends, like in here. Sweet. Yeah. I won't make you pay for my sure? shit. Yeah. That would be expensive. Honestly, if you made a, something like that, I'd probably buy at least a shirt of it eventually when I got the money. Yeah, Man, I was going to say. That like, would be kind I would... of awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I would assume that most people in here that actually have money would be willing to purchase this stuff on their own. Alright, then I'll probably just ask if anyone wants it for free. <laughs> in the front group. Yeah, that'd probably be more efficient. Because, like, for instance, assuming that this happens while I'm still in the current situation I'm in, I have no means of getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, back back to the SCP. Uh, yeah. Um, this is certain groups, <laughs> and I almost want. Actually, no. I honestly want to put this in what the fuck tier. <laughs> thinking about it, Andrew Jackson is technically one of the first American Karens, not one of the first Karens. No. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Hmm. <laughs> I don't you weren't here for it. We 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 basically came to the conclusion that Andrew Jackson was the first American Karen. And then I mentioned that that needs to be a shirt. Oh my god. And it's going to be one of my shirts that, that I make. Andrew Jackson was a Karen. Yeah. Okay. It's most it's I'm... mostly thanks to Jerry. Yeah. You know what? 
That goes. So did Cherry <laughs> say that? Yeah. Did Basically, that yeah. First? Yeah. Andrew okay. Jackson was one of the first Karens, is the exact quote, I think. Well, that's because we were talking about the SCP. <clears throat> that's a Karen ghost that kills people for finding out random true uh, hit truths behind uh, American mythology concerning history. Specifically, sir. Karen. Specifically I surrounding. Was probably Andrew Jackson, and I said Andrew Jackson was one of the first Karens. Yeah, specifically surrounding some of the earliest presidents' love lives. Yeah, and families. It's just, it's really odd. <laughs> it's, it's really odd. Well, now it's in quotes and things. I want to. Okay, I want. I want to see if. If Momo sees it. <laughs> oh. The thing is, I was kind of thinking it would be, like, something to do with the security cameras. <laughs> yeah, why the fuck? Yeah, why is that the image? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's right, the, cam the image is, like, a whole bunch of security cameras, like, grouped together like a colony. What the fuck is that? <laughs> We're just not going to question it. <laughs> no, I am questioning it right now. What the fuck? Anyway. Also, considering I'm I'm part Blackfoot, it should not be a surprise. I don't exactly look up to Andrew Jackson. <laughs> no, no one in their right mind should look up to Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jack Andrew I, Jackson should look down on himself. <laughs> anyway, I so I I'm I'm chair I'm Cherokee. Mm. Um, oh, I'm feelings as I do about him. Yeah. Then. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm Cherokee. I'm part Cherokee, huh. and I think part Comanche. Huh. Plus I'm another groups. I'm not sure how plus that an... happens, but plus a a number of different like tribes. Mm. Well, like um. <clears throat> No, I'm saying I don't know how your ancestors got together in such a way that. Um, it might have been my great grandparents because. Get together. It might have been my great grandparents because uh, um, one of my great grandparents was seventy five percent. One of them was uh, I think actually no, one of them was fifty. One of them was a uh, full native. Yeah. Anyway. All right, all right, on with the next SCP. Wait, what do you mean? I feel bad for sharing my first name with that. Oh, no. Wait, what? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Bookworm. <laughs> anyway. Wait, what happened? Bookworm said, I feel bad for sharing my first name with that fucker. Referring why did to it take Jackson. me? Why did it take me so long to realize what was going on? I was like, wait, what? What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> what do you mean first name? <laughs> uh, Book's real name is. Book's first name would be is Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. We're not talking mm. about you. Yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah, but books. Well, yeah, but books lamenting the fact that they share a name with that fucker. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, on with the next SCP. SCP-2009, also known as uh, Thomas Hang. And I sent a picture of, of of that SCP. Thomas Hang. Why do I have a feeling this could be triggering? <laughs> Why do I see a picture of of? I'm guessing bacteria. Hold on, up before I read yeah. it, I'll I'll send that picture in. Did you share a picture of a teenager with their face blooped out and go bacteria? No, uh, that's actually part of the article as well as this uh, as this picture I'm sending. I, Damn it! Did no one get my joke? What? Oh, now I get it. Oh, fuck yourself. Yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's the name of the SCP again, exactly? Thomas Hang. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, Thomas Hang. Why Why do I feel like this could be triggering? There you go. <laughs> oh. You know, everyone tries to joke that teenagers are dirty. This isn't helping. 
What? Wait. The second picture I posted. Oh, I did. Oh, I haven't even been looking. For me. They're both oh, uh, the SCP, apparently. Yeah, so I'll wait for you to see it. <laughs> A teenager that is the same SCP as this uh, microscopic bacteria. Yeah. Anyway. It, it seems like the old uh, the old saying of a of teenagers are dirty. Yeah. Anyway. SCP-2009-1 is a designation for all instances of an anomalous male humanoid capable of asexual reproduction by means of spores. What? Oh. Instances of S of dash one are genetically identical and prior to mutation display no unusual physiology. Instances of, instances of dash one are fully sapient and are capable of socializing normally up until the point of reduction of instances of dash two. Instances of dash one identifies themselves as Thomas Hang. No instances exhibits knowledge of, of its anomalous properties. All instances also have a shared baseline of memories, in, including childhood and early adulthood, taking place in the community of Pollensby, California. If exposed to temperatures of more than 20 degrees Celsius and humidity and access to 40% 40 for a period of an access of five days, Dash one will seek out a darkened area with preference given to tall buildings and places adjacent to high foot traffic areas. The body of dash one will begin to de distend and split into thin uh, chitin based hairs. These hairs will, will be used by dash one to anchor itself to nearby walls and objects and if possible draw limited sus sustenance from them. Dash one will cease sapient activity converting all of its energy to the production of dash two dash one will continue the production and release of dash two until it eventually dies of exhaustion dash two is a microscopic spore created by dash one capable of infecting human beings during a typical period of production dash one is capable of producing 55 kilograms of dash two Instances of Dash 2 are airborne and infect humans through the respiratory system. Within three to four days of exposure, individuals infected with Dash 2 will begin to experience symptoms of nausea, lethargy, and photosensitivity. Additionally, individuals will shun social contact, isolating themselves from others within five to eight days. The sociology of affected individuals will begin to change to match that of Dash 1. The process can cause varying levels of discomfort proportional to the sociological similarities between individual and dash one. Infected individuals are aware of the changes and frequently exhibit extreme psychological distress during the process. Within eight to nine days of exposure, the sociology of the subject will exactly match that of dash one, as will its baseline sociological state. DNA and memories. Newly created instances of Dash One exhibit no knowledge of their lives prior to transformation. SCP-2009 was discovered when reports of a widespread infection by a previously unknown disease in the town of Redacted. Is M.O. Minnesota? I think. Either that, that or actually no, that might be Montana. Montana, okay. Montana. Uh in the town of Redacted, Montana. Oh, Bookworm says Missouri. Oh, it's Missouri. Mis it's uh, Missouri? I'm just, I'm just gonna look it up, god damn it. <laughs> Why should Bookworm be right and it's just Missouri? M O State. While you guys figure that out, I'm gonna just munch on my watermelon uh it is Chili coated gummies. Oh. It is Missouri. Why is why is Missouri MO? <laughs> Alright. We all know I guess back to the SCP. In the in the town of Missouri, where Major 
to the Center for De Disease Control on Redacted 1998. Foundation agents embedded with the initial response team report extreme psych sociological changes brought on by exposure to Dash 2 in 46% of the town's residents. The town was immediately quarantined and with infected individuals being taken into Foundation custody. The CDC teams and the remainder of the town's residents were isolated until the nature of SCP-2009 became apparent. The town was destroyed and incinerated under the cover story of a freak wildfire on Redacted 1998. The CDC teams and unaffected residents were dosed with Class E amnestics and released from Foundation custody the next day. All but three of the newly created instances of Dash 1 were destroyed and incinerated, with the rest used for purposes of testing and the creation of instances of Dash 2 for purpose, purposes of study. During the destruction of Redacted, the desiccated remains of the instance, instance of Dash 1 were found in the bell tower of Redacted First, First Methodist Church it is a Suspected that this instance was the original vector of Dash 1, although it is unknown whether it was the original instance of, of SCP 2009 1. Yeah. E. Yeah, so basically, it's a neural bacterial virus that turns you into no. Thomas Hang. No, it's oh. not. No, it's not. <laughs> It's a fungus. Oh, it's a fungus. Oh, right, fungus. God damn it, Bright. All right. So it's a f yeah, it's a fungus that turns you into Thomas Hang. Why is Thomas Hang a fungus? I don't know. <laughs> Why is Bright's just suddenly really far away from the mic? <laughs> oh, I went to grab a pizza. <laughs> it's just I don't know. <laughs> across the room. <laughs> it all become oh god damn it, bookworm. <laughs> pizza. I eat pieces of watermelon gummy covered in chili. Uh I know I oh. I do know I do not know what to do with that. And again, the foundation decides to constantly incinerate people. <laughs> well, well, that, they that was... was infected if they left it not burning. If they didn't burn the town down, basically there was a slight chance there would be spores they didn't know. Yeah, further exposure. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that they specifically mentioned that non infected subjects were released yeah. after giving an anesthetic. Anesthetic amnestic. Anesthetic. Fuck. <laughs> they anesthetic. gave them they gave them anesthetic before lighting them on fire. <laughs> uh but yeah. I... They burned the town because they had to, because fungi Fungi did you hear what it even said when it reproduces? The little bits it creates to reproduce with are hair small. Yeah. How far that can fucking fly spores. around? You know how hard that is to spot? You have to yeah, I would... everything down. Yeah, I would say that this goes in country. Because well... um because I don't think it could spread to the entire world because it did mention that there has to be very specific yeah. uh humidity and temperature sets that will not exist across the entire world but any place that does get those and mr 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 hang shows up at could have an outbreak of this <laughs> and there are a lot of countries that can very regularly have this sort of temperature and you know what climate ever have that alaska well that's not a country that's a state well it's a state Wait, but alaska. like northern but yeah, like northern Canada would never de have to deal with this shit. Most of Russia would never have to deal with this shit. I started thinking, what if instead of Thomas Hang, that it, it made Donald Trump's? 
No. Please never say that again. <laughs> we don't need to make this even more cursed than it is. <laughs> but yeah, I'd 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 say country is the best place for it. I say country as <laughs> well. Also, Bright never bring up the idea of turning Trump into a fungus. That is so <laughs> easily incredible. Never. Never. Okay. Never. Okay. You know who's next? Donald Trump? <laughs> nope. It's <laughs> Mr. Laffy. Yay. Oh! I'll have to have a chat with the mad lad himself. I wonder if Mr. Laughing has video uh, audio logs. That'd be interesting. Also, I am proud to announce that I found a total of eight iron. I'm looking through all of them. Mm. They added more episodes, though. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. Actually, there's one episode called Cephalopods. Oh, that doesn't. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. Make sure that sp wait. Make sure that Spood's in the room. <laughs> Spood is actually gone at the moment. Aw. Anyway. Damn it. Then Spood's not going to get to hear about Cephal. We ready? Ready as we'll ever be dealing with Laffy. SCP-2030, a.k.a. Laugh is Fun. SCP-2030 is an anomalous phenomenon that manifests as a television series. The medium through which SB2030 manifests changes depending on the most popular format current in, currently in use. As of 2014, SB2030 most commonly inserts itself into automated DVD rental kiosks, file sharing websites, and paid on-demand video streaming services. Prior to 2012, SB2030 commonly manifested as a DVD set and a video rental stores and as VH VHS tapes prior to 2003. Thus far, no reliable evidence that SB2030 manifestations took place prior to, to the year 1993 has been discovered. However, 38 seasons of programming are known to exist, implying that SCP-2030 uh, SB has been active to some degree since 1976. The series title typically appears as Laugh is Fun, although variations on this name, such as Laugh is Life or Laugh is Laugh, are not uncommon. The series has no corresponding box art and mimics art from other television series, often causing viewers to select it, mistaking it for another program. The show is a hidden camera comedy series, showcasing the candid responses of various people and to bizarre, disturbing, and often anomalous situations. Episodes usually run between 10 to 12 minutes and feature introductory and closing segments that booked the hidden camera footage. No episode to date has had an end credit roll. SB2030-1 is a presumably human adult male that serves as a show host, providing introductory and closing commentary as well as appearing to victims to reveal that they are being filmed for a television series. Uh, SV2030-1 is invariably shown wearing a royal blue three-piece suit with black and white uh, wig tip shoes due to the way in which scenes are filmed. SCP-2030-1 is only seen from the neck down, making identification difficult. It refers to itself as Laffy McLafferson. Individuals appearing on the show often react to the events that they witness with panic or distress, but appear immediately calmed upon the appearance of Dash 1. This is true even when an individual in question has sustained significant bodily harm or witnessed a particularly traumatic event. Additionally, most re recorded individuals seem to express some degree of familiarity with Dash 1, with some claiming to be fans of the show, research into whether SV2030 uses its viewership as its victim selection pool is ongoing. Episodes following a particular theme that each prank segment alludes to, 
1 introduces these themes at the beginning of each episode in an as of yet unidentified film studio while standing on top a bright yellow stage decorated with oversized geometric shapes of various colors. Episodes themes vary from the mundane such as the beach, pets, and candy to the strange and violent such as mail fraud, arson, and t and the T word. And what? Uh, the T word. People blowing themselves up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, subject. I mean, yeah, all right. Sorry. I was about to say. Line, oh, so what was that? Gets, gets idea. What was that, Hatchet? Yeah, I was. I was. Like, I was about to say. Do you know how many potentially TOS words start with T? Right. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, SCB twenty thirty dash one delivers a similar speech at the end of each program to close out the show. At the end of each episode, the camera pulls back and around from. Dash one stage to show the studio audience, which usually comprises the individuals featured in the episode. During this time, the words filmed in front of the studio audience, created in partnership with YWTGATHFT, are superimposed over the footage and white text. Researching the identities of the people featured in the show prank segments has revealed that they are all persons who are officially documented as have having died or gone missing in the year they appeared on the program. Through investigations into the deaths of SB2030, participants have revealed a number of inconsistencies and contradictions in matters concerning the circumstances of the deaths. Additionally, the exhumations of the individual's remains have revealed that all recorded participants' bodies are currently missing. The general consensus among researchers assigned to SB2030 is that victims are likely abducted after their use in the show, with their disappearances covered up when possible. However, no concrete evidence connecting the individual's deaths with SB2030 besides the show's footage has yet been found. Alright. Now, before I start reading these episodes, warning... Uh it could get really graphic and gory. If you don't like that, leave. Hey, hey, everybody. Laugh laugh is fun is extremely triggering. Run. Let's continue. <laughs> Season 24. Episode theme swelling. Individuals involved. Oh, God. <laughs> it's just the fucking theme. <laughs> Individuals involved. Macy Garsham and Kyle Parker. Killed by a hit and run driver on September 18th, 2000. Scene description An elderly woman sits on a park bench feeding nearby pigeons with seed from a bag. Gershom and Parker, a couple, walk down a park path and approach the woman. Once the two come within approximately 1.5 meters of the elderly woman, a swarm of pigeons fly into the elderly woman's mouth, causing her stomach to become severely engorged and quickly rupture. The couple express great distress at the event until Laffy emerges from the elderly woman's open stomach cavity, at which point Gershom and Parker appear relieved. <laughs> Actually, you're going to like the next episode. <laughs> Season 21, episode theme. Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, oh my I, God. I know this one. I know this one. This is awful. Individuals involved. Doris Carter died of ovian cancer February 24th, 1997. Scene description. Miss Carter walks into her kitchen and opens the cabinet door, out of which falls a large mass of flesh. As Carter screams, the mass grows and reshapes itself into a severely disproportional fact smile of former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Margaret Thatcher, with its head twice as large as its torso. Carter rushes to leave the room, but the Thatcher creature leaps on, onto her before she can escape. It sends its tongue into the woman's open mouth, and the Thatcher faces of various sizes begin appearing across Carter's skin. Faces proceed to recite Thatcher's April 1986 speech on the bombing of Libya in perfect unison. SCP-2030-1 
uh, I mean, Laffy climbs out of the nearby cupboard and points to the hidden cameras. Miss Kerr smiles. The creature's tongue still extends down her throat. That's a good way to say what a parasite Margaret Thatcher was, but that's still terrifying. Oh, dear God, not this one. Um, I think oh. I'm, I'm going to skip this one. No, 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 what? let's do it. I can read it. No, all right, I'll read it. Season 13, episode theme, squirrels. Yeah, it's the squirrels. Individuals it's in, the squirrels. Yeah, individuals involved, Melissa and Travis and... Anglud disappeared last seen May 12th, 1989. Scene description Miss England lies in bed next to a male figure, presumably Mr. England. A series of high pitched squeaking noises are heard, and Miss England is awakened. She tells her husband to wake up, but she but he does not respond. He places her hand on his shoulder but quickly draws it back with a shriek. His skin begins to undulate as though something is moving underneath. A multitude of squirrels then burst from various places on his body, quickly filling the bed and crawling onto the woman. She rises to leave the room, but Laffy walks in and turns on the light. He is accompanied by Mr. England, who has been skinned from head to foot, but gives no indication of feeling any discomfort. All three share a laugh, and the segment ends. Oh, how fun. Alright. Season 13. Um Oh, and once that? again, my first inclination is to ask, are the squirrels okay? Yeah. <laughs> season season 13, episode thing. Uh, tracheotomies. <clears throat> Individual involved, Gary Terman, Lindsay Terman, and their children. Died in a vehicu vehicular accident, April 28th, 1989. Scene description. The four sit around a diner table eating a meal. Mr. Terman begins coughing and gasping for air, as if choking. As the others of the table begin to panic, a pair of slits appear on Terman's throat, allowing him to breathe. These slits become quickly become nostrils and rapidly grow into a, a full nose, which in turn becomes an entire second head, identical to Terman's original. The second head then sprouts a neck of its own, and the entire process repeats. This continues until 18 necks and heads have been sprouted from the original, at which point Laffy steps out of the underneath the table, and everyone present erupts into uh, laughter, including all 19 of Mr. Terman's heads. Mm. Season 37, Episode Theme, Cephalopods. Individuals involved, Rebecca Nash, Died of complications in child delivery on November 2nd, 2013. Hospital, hus, hospital records show no evidence of anomalous activity during birth. This scene description. A team of, of obstetricians form a Cesarean, perform a, a cesarean section procedure on Miss Nash, who is in labor. The team comment on the size of the child's cranium and the amount of her hair present on it. Several minutes into the procedure, a doctor makes an exclamation of surprise and drops an instrument on the floor. Muffle, muffle vocalizations can be heard in the background. The rest of the staff begin to panic as the head emerges <sighs> unassisted from Nash, causing her a great deal of pain. The child's head can be seen to resemble that of American television presenter Ryan Seacrest. The child sings, <laughs> row, row, row your boat, and a female voice as it continues to exit the mother. As more <laughs> of it forms a form emerge, the child can be seen to have a bar body of a full-grown octopus. Uh, once the child fully exists, exits Nash's body, it continues to sing as another head begins to emerge. Three more children are produced in total with the heads of celebrities Jack Nicholson and Johnny Cash and Martin Freeman. Respectively, all with similar octopus bodies. Together, the four sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat in four-part harmony. Laffy walks into the room and the show's jingle plays. Laffy points at hidden cameras in the room, prompting the, the obstetricians and Nash to begin laughing. The creatures on Nash's torso begin to sing. Nash then loses consciousness, presumably from blood loss. Okay. 
There's one last one. episode. But yeah, but with that episode, I just needed to take a moment and to mention to mention my intrusive thoughts. Yeah. I have more recently been moderately like I, I have like one of the final scenes from uh that Disney movie, the Princess and the Frog. Yeah. Stuck in my head. Where you have like the jazz theme where the voodoo doctor gets fucking offed. Uh I mean yeah. uh so 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 as the heads are coming out of the woman, all my brain is doing is bum 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 Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Oh my god. Anyways. God, the music from the music from that film is so good. I just oh, yeah. also am frustrated with the fact that it falls into that yucky trope of demonizing voodoo. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I'm gonna comment that most movies and or or all movies made by Americans concerning voodoo all demonize voodoo because the people who make the Movies don't understand it or want to use a lack of understanding to make it scary. Yeah, basically. Like but it's also it's this... a lot of horror movies are also super racist. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, I, I think it's just kind of like how a lot of tropes surrounding horror have mm -hmm. stemmed from a mixture of racism and Christian baggage. Like how like witches, for instance. Like, that's entirely mm -hmm. a Christian baggage placed upon a different spiritual practice. But yeah. because that Christian baggage has existed for years and years and years, it's a common source of horror, even though it's, like, literally was just ladies out in the woods doing their thing. Actually, there are different cultures' versions of witches. Well, obviously, In yeah. The Mexican version, there's one story of a witch woman who uh turned one made one guy's winky break and the, turned the other guy into a lady <laughs> it's <Yeah>. which it's <laughs> which hrt yeah anyway but um, <laughs> sorry sorry just <laughs> just say they were not nice men and she thought they needed no. to feel a little medicine yeah to and and to clarify it was which rt yeah which rt <laughs> Uh, to clarify, what I was meaning when I made that description was like Appalachian witch craft. Uh, like the, the main thing that got caught up in stuff like the Salem witch trials and where a lot of like modern American perceptions of the horror witch comes from. Well, also European witches yeah, true, true, true. treated the same way. Yeah. So I mean, that's the exist. I mean, li literally the literally the origin of black cats are bad luck. Yeah, black yeah. cats would help women out because, and everyone out because cats helped people because the rodents were causing issues. Mm -hmm. But but then you know a whole bunch of popes are like, wait, wait, the cats are evil. Kill all the cats. And then, like, a hundred years later, it's like, wait, why are there so many rats with all these damn plague-ridden well, leaves? Well, technically, before a hundred years later, they killed so many cats that the plague returned. And other issues returned. Yeah. They realized, oh, this was a mistake. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. With thought. Anyway. Yeah, Bright's been trying to finish it for a while. Yeah, the final episode... The following is a transcription of a typical speech delivered from by Laffy during one of the show's closing segments. Season 32, episode theme, Printers. Transcription. Transcription. Ha, what a ride, eh, folks? We've seen printers that... I, I forgot what uh, voice... What voice did I give Laffy? I gave him, like, a really southern voice for some reason. <laughs> you gave him a... Your, uh... The, uh the voice I remember oh. you getting laughy is very hyper. Ah, yeah. what a ride, eh, there folks? You go. There We've we seen go. printers that eat, eat, eaters that print, and everything in between. Makes you appreciate the old clunker you have back in that office, doesn't it? No, printers may not always work when you want, 
or need them to, but they ensure you make some excellent comedy. And that's what we're he all about here. Comedy, we're here to make you laugh. We hope you laugh. Thank you for laughing with us. That's what we're about here, doesn't it, folks? Come laugh with us again next time. And remember, laugh is fun. Good night. And laugh. And laugh. Just laugh. We love to make laugh. Make more laughter so as to... As to for laugh. Laugh with us. Laugh with us. And it just repeats. And then the what? last line... Isn't the last line, and let us in? Yeah, laugh and let us in. Note, the video cuts off abruptly and a black screen is displayed for 30 seconds. Laughter and soft wet notes can be heard in the background before a program ends. There's... Um, there's the last one... line is linked to a story called Funerals Are Fun. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, with Laffy... Even though they said that that uh, the male thing, the reason why I said presumably humanoid male, presumably. because they've been shown to be female and even an ammonoid human humanoid. Mm. Yeah. So it's unknown what gender or sex or what species Laffy is. Right. Well, Laffy. Considering the weird things he walked out of in his show, I think we know he can do quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. Laffy is what Laffy wants to be. Our dumb human perceptions of gender do not hold Laffy down. However, um, it is heavily theorized that Laffy is one of the few remaining reality benders from the Kingdom of Abaddon. That yeah, managed to break this theory. Yeah, ma managed to break th through uh, through the cycle. Which is God's probably, I, which makes sense God. as to why they keep hiding themselves from the foundation. Every day, time they try to hide or find him, he disappears, or they disappear. Yeah. Which makes sense. Mm. Will you read funerals but, are fun? Probably not. I I can probably What's read that as fun? I can probably read that as like a horror story. Okay. Yeah, for the horror story streams. Bum, 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 oh, bum, bum, it, bum. Just remember to try to read it with a Boston accent. <laughs> Boston accent? Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, because it takes place in Boston. I don't think I can do a Boston accent, but I can try and do an accent. Bum, 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 I'll probably have bum, to like bum, watch bum, videos on what a Boston accent is and see if I can do bum. it. Bum, 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 I'll probably get as close ready? as I can. Alright, I have it permanently saved onto my phone. Are you ready? Oh, and <laughs> Cheery put it in Discord, so it's also there. But, okay, there's one thing I want to say. Laffy does have a lot of power. But, oh, yeah. I don't think there will be XK or ZK. Mainly because of the fact, if he wipes out humanity, who's going to watch the show? Yeah, I was, like, already assuming that it would just be certain groups. Yeah. Like, like, there's no way to contain it, and it's really fucked, but Laffy's not intending to destroy the world. Yeah, he's not intending to destroy anything. Like, like he has a lot of power. <laughs> Which is terrifying. Which is probably what? why the Foundation wants to capture him. Damn it, now I just, now I just want that animated. Like, all the octopuses coming out of the woman. With various people's heads, and it's bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> that probably would... I, If I could animate, I would animate that. But That would, would be so great. It would definitely be heavily age-restricted. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> That's the ne next picture. SCP-2032, also known as Father Time. Oh. Apparently they were once safe, but got reclassified to Keter. Oh, god damn it. Who pissed off Father Time? 
<laughs> I want names. <laughs> All right. I want full um, legal names and addresses. Santa? Wait, I wonder if this is the guy that like he 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 beat death in like a game or something and became immortal. Didn't we already touch that guy? Maybe I don't know. I think we already placed that guy. I think oh. it was earlier. Well, never mind then. <laughs> also, I would like to mention uh, at my new home base on the uh, Site 19 server, uh, I have found an absolutely beautiful lush caves biome underneath my house. I am very happy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Definitely reclassify. Nothing bad with this SCP. <laughs> this bookworm. Yeah. Anyway, SCP-2032 appears to be an elderly man of me Middle Eastern origin. His true age and ancestry are not currently known, although plausible records would indicate connection to the redacted. Uh. Caliphate circa redacted CE. Although SCP-2032 has an apparent inhuman longevity, his physical and mental health are estimated to have begun deteriorating with age several decades. I want to say decades as decades. Decades. <laughs> several decades. Several decades prior to coming into Foundation custody. SCP-2032 is currently receiving daily treatment for moderate Alzheimer's and mild dementia, along with physical therapy for arthritis. Yeah, SB so this isn't this isn't yeah. the guy you were talking about. Yeah, it's not. SB twenty thirty two is is now also undergoing speech therapy following a stroke. The main anomal anomalous quality of SB twenty thirty two is that his memory directly affects the general public's historical recollection. As SCP-2032 